Spring bait selection for muskies. Uh, a real long story, but I'll try and keep it fairly tight. In general, early in season, smaller baits are better. Every lake's gonna be a little bit different, but we definitely in general wanna downsize our bait selection. So I wanna make sure I've got some cranks, jerks, jig type baits, and believe it or not, uh, spoons as well especially as we get into open water but as far as general size i'd say the average would be about six to seven inches that i'm going to target one of my favorites for a crankbait trolling casting type bait is uh, the livingston headhunter in the six inch size uh, th these baits will run down about four to five feet i do also really suggest sometimes because the uh the fish at times will be real shallow uh, right after the spawn. I, I take one and I shave the lip down a little as well and you still get tremendous action with that bait and now that bait turns into like a two foot bait so you can run it over extremely shallow weeds and of course shallower ranges. That's more of a slender profile. It's always good to have a bait like the bulldozer that's got a bluegill type profile, panfish type profile and you got to have a glider uh, there's a lot of good gliders out there this is my buddy Daryl Nybauer bit and tackle this is called a warlock but again the right size and kind of that bluegill frame really hangs on a pause uh, smaller bucktails or spinner baits definitely should be in the lineup and then these whale tails my buddy Dave here makes these and uh, this is the smallest size of the whale tail in a couple of different colors this is a combination of like kind of a straight swim or a jigging type action you can add weight on these or reduce the weight depending on how deep you want those to go through the water column talking about bigger baits of course there's lots of bigger baits bigger whale tails bigger head hunters but this is just an example of a livingston flipper it's a it's a new bait it can be straight retrieved and just a variety of different actions as a jerk bait as well but that's something on a steady weather day if nothing else is happening with the smaller baits you do want to go ahead and try the bigger baits one other thing i might mention too is that uh Generally, top water is not a super hot spring bait, but you do not have to wait for the little duckies uh, to come out in order for top water to be effective. And one thing I will say is at times, especially if I've got a calm water situation, if I've raised a nice fish on any of these other lures and you're coming back, maybe on a weather period or moon period a little while later, you know right where that fish is sitting. Sometimes a glider top water or some other type of uh, smaller top water can be a real effective bait coming back on a fish you know where it lives and then quickly too i want to talk about just the whole idea that generally post spawn we're talking structure fishing you want to start near the spawning areas which of course are soft bottom areas where the first weed growth shows up you kind of start in an area like that everything adjacent to it but also nearby structures and then the open water, the nearest deep water to that area. You will have fish right away that are going to go out into open water. And the interesting thing is about open water fish this time of the year, you don't necessarily need to be fishing deep. You can be over 100 feet of water and still in a lot of cases, your most effective depth range is probably going to be in that top 10 feet of the water column. And there's something I really picked up on probably about 30 years ago that I, I'm not a huge spoon guy for muskies. Most people always think of spoons for pike, but there's something about spoons over structure I haven't done that well, but over open water, weighted spoons can be really effective as well, either casting or trolling. And then on the whole topic of how to retrieve your baits and the size of the baits. Of course, that can be a little different on any body of water. But in general, if there's steady weather for the time of the year, you can most likely go with larger baits and a little faster and more aggressive retrieves during that period. So if you have a gradual warm up, which is normal for spring, you expect that a little bigger, a little faster is probably going to be the deal. If you've got a cold front or if you have extreme heat, 
the bigger the, the difference between the water temperature and the air temperature, the more likely the fish are apt to be in a funk. Most likely you're going to want to be slower and smaller baits in that case. You want to be real close to the structure. You want to try real precise retrieves. You want to try and get right in their face. And that may be, it's, it's the same for any time of year, but one thing you really want to concentrate on with any of these baits before you give up on a bait you want to try it a bunch of different ways. You want to try it faster, slower, more drops, more pauses, whatever it might be. Try a bunch of different things and try speed at times just to, you know, try and trigger a strike. Always be thinking that before you give up on a bait. I'm going to try this. I'm going to try that. Different things, slower, faster. If obviously you have any action at all, especially if it's a strike, you want to be reproducing that because there's definitely going to be a pattern to that on a given day. It could very well change the next day, but whatever's working that day, you want to repeat that if you found it. 